Okay, so we left off with our flip page. Right now I've got the book base enabled and I've got flip page enabled. And if you remember, um, we've got the Z on the book base is just a little bit different so that he doesn't stand out in front. Let's see. Let me do control Z to get it back to where it was. So let's um, add a script to this flip page. There's several ways you can do it. I kind of just like right click in the where I want it, C sharp script, and I'm going to say flip page. Okay. Now that we can pull up flip page, let's see, just click him, and then you can just, after you click him, you can either one take flip page and draw it this way. Or you can just drag it over there. So that's added it. Now let's double click it to start our editing. Now some of this is going to be real similar to what we did before, but not exactly. We are going to go ahead and add our systems, these two, so we may as well copy and paste those in. We could type it if we wanted to. And what else are we going to have? Um, we're going to have a start time and end time and a rotation vector. We might change the name to some of these. So let's go ahead and paste those in. So if we're just going to call this is clipped. Um, what else do we want? We want a button. Copy that. We're going to have two buttons. We're going to call it um, first. I didn't copy in enough stuff, obviously. Let's use using Unity Engine.ui. Now, this is going to be next button and previous button. Um, did we have a listener over here? We're having a listener, so we may as well copy some of this code. Save from doing so much typing. So we'll say if next button. Then we're going to add a listener to the next button. And then this is going to return one page. We haven't written it yet, but we're going to. Button click. But we're going to have a, some enumerators up here too. Because we want to use the same method, whether it's next or previous. Okay? So we're going to say private. Enum. Button type. And our two button types are going to be uh, next button and previous button. And so we're going to send um, on next, we're going to say button type, next button. And we're going to do the same thing for previous button, except we're going to send a previous button. So we're just changing from next to pre. Turn one page and it's going to be pre. Okay. So let's write our turn one button click. Private boy turn one page button click and it's going to be button type. So, we're going to set a rotation. So, so we're going to say, when they click something, we're going to say, it's clicked, equals true, and then we're going to set the start time just like we did before, equals 
then we're going to check the type. If it's button type, next we're going to do something. And if it's button type previous, we're going to do something else. So, we're going to change the rotation vector. Equals new vector 3, um, 0. This is similar to what we did on the other ones. And then if it's previous, we're going to put it in the opposite direction. Say so negative 180. See what else we need for this. We need to work on our update. So we're going to say if it's clicked, we're going to transform it to the new rotation position. So I transform. Rotate, and we're going to send it to the rotation vector times time dot delta time. And then we're going to check the end time like we did on the other one. Equals date time now. And if it's greater than one, so we're going to say if the end time minus the stop time total seconds is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to stop it. So we're going to say it's click. Okay, one of the things that we didn't do, we need is a start rotation and a start position. Because when it's done, we want to put it back the way it was. So let's um, private vector 3. Start a rotation. I know that start position. Now for the rotation, we're going to use a field called quaternium. Q U A T E R N I O N. We're going to call that start rotation. Now, when we first start this up, we want to remember these positions. So we're going to say start rotation equals transform. And the transform was the object rotation. And his start position equals transform position. And that transform is this thing. Well, this represents it, but it's that's where it is. So after we finished rotating, then we want to set the transform back to where it was. Okay, so we're going to say transform rotation equals start rotation. And transform position equals start position. Okay, let's see how this works out. Saving it. Hopefully, we don't have any. So, we've got flip page. Let's add our buttons. Next button. We'll see.
next button and the previous button. Okay. So let's uh, let's move this up so we can see it a little better. Okay, that side looks good. Now let's check previous. Oh, that don't look good. Anyway, we have to do something else for that. Okay. To fix that on the previous button, when we go to check for that, we need to move it. It's in a bad spot, okay? So we need to change its rotation and move it before we even start, okay? So we'll say vector 3, uh, new rotation. equals new vector 3 uh, 0 1 oh no 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 equals the start rotation x and we want to make the 180 and the start rotation z And then when we get there, we are, we're going to rotate it to that new rotation position so that it will work for, for us, okay? And you rotate with the quaternion, you know, to make it go instantaneous. And you're just going to have to copy this. Q-U-A-T-E-R-N-I-O-N dot E-U-L-E-R, new rotation. And that just makes it instantaneous so it doesn't, you know, go through it slowly like with the is update. And then we're going to do it. So let's uh, pull this back up again. Okay, so let's start it again. Okay. Okay. Next, that's good. Let's try previous. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, so in the next video, in the next lesson, we'll move on to the next step with this.